Hey guys, this is your boy Greg, and today is another edition of Never a Dull Moment. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about strops. And for those of you who are new to sharpening, this is actually a somewhat important addition to your sharpening regimen. There are many people out there who don't believe this is necessary. There are reasons for that, and we will get into that. Today's purpose is to talk about the different types of strops. We will get in in a different video on stropping technique, um, stropping progressions, um, different types of abrasives that can be attached to the strops. But today what I want to do is just show you the different types of strops that are available. So a quick uh, brief kind of description of why we have these things is whenever you're done sharpening, you have the option of using a stropping technique on material, whether you use cardboard, denim, leather, a variety of materials and your goal is to remove the wire edge of the knife that you've just finished sharpening or say even a razor blade and so on. You might have seen a video, it could be something that you've seen a long time ago at barber shops where the person takes a piece of material, usually leather, and they run the razor blade back and forth. In doing so, it didn't make much sense to you but you, you might have guessed that it was just kind of making the edge of the blade straight or, or sharp. And so you were not wrong. We are going to show you the different types of things and how they're used. So I have a wide variety of material here and sizes. There are some not represented, but I will talk about them. So let me go ahead and just introduce the different types of things real quick, and then we'll talk about them. So the first thing I want to show is this was the first drop that I ever owned. This is made by uh, Kramer for Zawilling. This was about $54. It is a piece of very tough leather. And uh, I've enjoyed this, not, I've enjoyed this drop very much. It is a really good size. And I wanna make sure that you get to see this. It is long enough that if you're familiar with the technique, you're able to run the blade back and forth. Um, and it fit across, but strops come in different sizes. So I'm going to be showing you some different sizes as well. Um, so some other ones we have here is we have one that I made. We have a video and I'll put a link above in which I made one in comparison to this. I actually made two of these identical for $25. I got the material from a craft store. And in that video, um, we share information on how to make one. It's really good for your budget. And this is a leather that we purchased, not unlike this leather here. Okay, we were able to get this at uh, a craft store here in town. You will always also see at the craft stores, they have different types of wood. This for example is a pack of two. I am going to be making a strop once again. I'm gonna be making a paddle strop. And again, if you want to refer to that video on how to make a strop, you'll see that there is leather, wood, and adhesive. I've got a video coming out next week, which is um, talking about diamond abra abrasives and diamond emulsions. And in that, we are going to be making, I will already have made four new strops that are completely identical so I can compare four different diamond abrasives. So please stay tuned for that video next week. We're excited about that. But you can see that if I was making a leather strop with this material, that I would make a paddle. I would have a place to hold with my hand. And I would be able to do the, if I simulate this as a knife, I'd be able to do my knife back and forth with this. So we will make some inexpensive strops next week and be comparing some diamond emulsions. We also have some other various sizes. You can see these get a little smaller. These obviously would be great, especially for your everyday carry knives. Okay. We'll get into the material in just a moment. And then over here we have some hanging straps and then we have a large piece of leather that is not hanging. So let's talk about them real quick. There are paddle straps. I don't have any here, even though we're making them in a paddle strop. So a lot of times has a handle, maybe even a piece of leather attached to it. Um, it can be single sided or double sided. These strops are obviously single sided, but we could have very easily put a piece of leather on the bottom of this and done one on one side and one on the other. I actually 
put some uh, suede on the side of this. So this is actually triple sided. Okay, so you can purchase paddles. Those are really great for travel, by the way. Um, we're going to be doing a video talking about the difference between honing and stropping. But some of you guys in your knife bag when you're traveling, the different types of knives, especially softer metal, might have a honing rod. Uh, it could be steel. It could be ceramic. For those of you with Japanese knives, a much harder material. You might not want to actually strike that type of metal against something so hard. A strop is a great answer. And the paddle straps really fit right in your bag. Um, I would even say that some of these uh, are smaller ones might fit in your travel bag. So we have some straps here by Jinda Industries. Um, they have different types of system, different types of paddles. They have different sizes for everything from um, KME systems to Wicked Edge. Uh, and on their website, when you go on there, if you type in um, the straps, you'll see they really do offer a wide variety of straps available to you. So let's talk about some of the things that they offer. So the first thing you're going to see here is a standard leather. Okay. And I'm showing you the thickness of the leather right now. So it is nice and firm. Um, they have this acrylic material with laser etching in the back. And they go ahead and put the title of what it is on there for you. So you don't have to worry and second guess what it is. Really good size. I, I like something in personally a little bit bigger for kitchen knives, but I have been able to do a kitchen knife on this. This leather, this is how you see it. Um, it doesn't have anything loaded on it. When I say loaded, it does not have an emulsion of any kind put on it. Next to that, we have, I'm going to show you kangaroo twice. We have kangaroo, the skin, not kangaroo tail, which we will refer to later, but kangaroo skin. You're able to see the thickness. I don't know if you can get that really good. The kangaroo on here, very thin. So kangaroo skin is the second toughest leather behind kangaroo tail. So this is also kangaroo. Um, the difference is with this kangaroo is I have actually already loaded a diamond emulsion on it. Um, so you can once again see the thickness. Difference is amazing. The thicker leather is tough, but it's not quite as tough as the kangaroo skin. Absolutely amazing. You can see that the diamond emulsion loaded amazing. And again, uh, Jinda did a great job of writing on the back what it is so we don't have to worry in our collection. The next thing I want to point out is a type of strop that is exclusive to Jinda Industries. This is a nano cloth. Um, to my knowledge, it is for Jinda. I don't know that anyone else carries this. Nano cloth will come in various sizes. The website has many different sizes. This is actually a, a midsize. They have a much bigger strop available. Definitely, I'm interested in getting that for myself. And you'll notice that they went ahead and they color coded and wrote words on the back that says 0.5 micron. This other one says uh, 4 micron. The reason this is, is relevant is that neither one of these nanocloth actually are 0.5 micron or 4 micron. The nanocloth on any item, the nanocloth is the exact same material. The nanocloth is designed as a strop not to be used with um, by itself. It is designed to be used exclusively with a diamond emulsion or CBN spray. Now. What they went ahead and did was they went ahead and color coded it so you don't have to write in permanent marker on the side that if this is the 0.5 nano cloth, that if you're using the 0.5 nano, um, the 0.5 micron diamond emulsion, that it goes in and um, you have it forever. You have it marked so you know which one's which because diamond emulsion sprays come in different sizes. That is a different um, video. We will be talking about that shortly in another video. But it really has this really nice black is how it comes. The nanocloth material has got a honeycomb structure. The honeycomb structure is designed for you to apply the diamond emulsion quite generously and it absorbs it and it really does hold a lot. So initially you have to like really load it, but once it's loaded, it's, it's, 
It's really full of that diamond. It helps to spread it out evenly. The honeycomb structure allows you to put different pressure on it to get different results. So you can put a mild pressure and get some of the diamond emulsion on the knife to help drop it, or you can press a little bit more. So it's really nice the, the way it has that give and access to the amount of diamond emulsion you put in there. Um, a lot of times the diamond emulsion is uh, water soluble. So if you ever need to clean these, you can rinse them thoroughly and then use like some type of compressed air to spray on it and really kind of blow out the material. But just with Jinda Industries only, you've already seen that at this size, we have so many variations. We have the nano cloth made ex specifically for diamond emulsions. We have kangaroo that by itself, the kangaroo skin, the second toughest leather, great for pulling off the wire edge, as well as, um, it, you know, stropping helps to, with um, edge retention. So that you see that we've loaded a diamond emulsion, not on the nano cloth, but on the kangaroo, and it's still loaded well. They also have traditional leather, if that's what you like, and they have it in different sizes. They have larger sizes than this. They have these paddles. This particular paddle has kangaroo on one side, and then it has um, nano cloth on the other. So you can kind of custom make this into what you want it to do. Um, now we're going to go into uh, like the original one I talked about, the traditional leather. This is like the average size. So if you really want to compare, you can kind of see that the, an average size drop is a little bit bigger. And that would be great for, for everything from your 210 millimeter knives all the way down to any size knife below that down to 105 or 90 millimeter. Um, if when you're getting up to 270 millimeter, I mean, you have to kind of make it work. 270 millimeter and 300 millimeter knives, you kind of run out of room, so, but, but you learn to make it work. Um, again, I made an oversized one. Uh, just by getting a piece of basswood and putting leather on, you could honestly make a strop as long as you wanted it to be, especially for the larger knives. Okay. And now we're going to go into the hanging strop. Now, I wanted to make it a point to show you the different sizes that we have here. We have some different material and these are all very special. So, the first two that you see are kangaroo tail. The first thing I want to point out about kangaroo tail is that it is the actual toughest leather that you can get. Um, the kangaroo tail itself, it just, if you think of the animal and how it uses it and what it's able to do, it, it, it's the coarseness of the hair that you normally see on it. It is quite unique in its strength. Um, so we have two different kangaroo tail. The first kangaroo tail is by Knife Grinders. Again, I'll have links to everything here. Knife Grinders, hanging, um, hanging strop. Of course, the kangaroo tail has a rough side and a smooth side. I don't know if you can see in the camera I'm holding up close, but there is a lot of texture. You need to know that uh, the kangaroo tail is a protected material. It is protected by agencies and the way it's gathered. It is expensive. It is um, the older the kangaroo, the more texture you're going to see in the material. This uh, hanging strop here is from my friend Ken. I'm going to uh, actually have a link to Ken's uh, Facebook page. Ken has started importing this material. You can import from very specific uh, dealers in Australia, whole kangaroo tail. So he has done that. He has paid the cost and imported the material to America. He wanted to offer this material at a less expensive price. I will have links and descriptions and prices on there. But by comparison, I showed you earlier this strop. This is a $54 strop. I showed you how to make something similar, two of them for $25. The different strops on Jinda Industries, I will put the different dimensions and different sizes. I mean, you have everything from $16 to $33. You can, you can depending on if you're getting into kangaroo, 
you can get a, definitely a variety from the sizes um, if you're doing a combo. When we get over here to this big daddy over here, this kangaroo tail, it's going to vary on uh, shipping from Australia, availability. I just checked the website a moment ago. Kangaroo tail strops by Knife Grinders is currently not available. They said that they can sell um, the kangaroo tail material, but the actual, they have no strops available. This strop, I think it's around $150 when it's available and that is not including shipping and handling you know their currency exchange australian dollar um you'd have to go through that so right now you're on a back order so ken has went ahead and got the material in america you will notice with both of them see if i can get them side by side on camera there is such a texture in the material and that has to do the textured variances with the age of the kangaroo and the uh, uh, older kangaroo makes a larger kangaroo, which can make a bigger strop. So the king, it would, it's definitely more valuable when you have a bigger one and you pay for that. And if you look at the variation, I mean, I'm able to do most knives on this size. So having a strop kin size is great. And obviously having a much larger strop is even greater. Is it necessary? I mean, I'm definitely able to do my 270 millimeter knives with so much ease on this particular um, kangaroo tail. It's so long, it's, there's just room. But I was also able to use Kins and get the knives done on here. By price comparison, Kin is doing um, 95. You do not see here, he has a variation. I'm gonna superimpose over this video, a photograph. He has a variation where he puts a ring at the bottom. Um, you can see that both of them have hooks, which I will display in a moment, that they're able to hook onto something and, and it's a hanging strop. Um, he is going to add a ring. So you can do a $95 with the ring. You can do $85 without the ring. Um, you have to pay shipping. And he has told me that he is going to do 15% off for those who are uh, watching the channel. So... If you, you know, write him and say you saw this video, then he's going to give you a discount. Okay. The, both of the strops have a rough side and a dull side. And what you would do is you would initially take a knife that you have sharpened and you have that wire edge, which is keeping the knife from its fullest potential. And you would hold taut the strop and you would do the stropping technique. Again, we'll go over technique in a different video. On the rough side, the goal is to remove any wire edge. You would then turn it over and do so many passes on the smooth. And even the smooth has texture. Okay, so the same thing with the knife grinders. The knife grinder has this like handle at the bottom. Really nice. And you can really get a good grip. But for those of you, you know, you might be wanting to spend the 25 and make it yourself. You might have the 150, you might have the 85 without the handle, 95 with and plus the 15%. I mean, you're doing great. You're you're getting an incredible deal with this guy for to get the kangaroo tail. If you actually were here to feel the difference between the kangaroo tail and the kangaroo skin, there's a difference, okay? The kangaroo skin, the difference is considered, the skin is like your skin, and then the tail is like the sole of your feet, okay? So there is extremely different texture. And now I'm gonna go to another hanging strop, and this is like your traditional leather. This particular strop was sent to us by, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, I hope he doesn't, um, get mad at me, Hans, if you're watching. So we have Schlieff Junkies. So whether I say Schleif or Schlieff Junkies, it means grinding junkie in German. So uh, this was sent to me. It is very firm. This uh, leather is, I really love it. Um, it is traditional leather, like you know, it has been vegetable tanned. 
This leather has been made specifically for this company. They have a deal with this hanging that they also send to you the same exact thing in a non-hanging with 0.25 micron diamond emulsion preloaded. The smoothness of this leather and the firmness of this leather is something I like to finish the knife with. Um, so let's talk about dropping for a second. You've, you've spent all this time with your knife. You've put it on an abrasive stone and now there are grooves in the side of the knife. So the, the knife's diameter or its thickness, I should say, is a certain thickness, but there are ditches that are going through it. And the pieces of metal that are sticking up that separate the ditches, they're a false sense of thickness because they're weak. And so if we were to take the knife and we were to rub it on the leather, we were able to make those fold over which actually in increases edge retention and it cuts down on the drag and, and makes a better knife feel because there is less friction. So a suggestion from me is if you have nothing at all and you're done with your, um, your stones, you could learn a stropping technique on your stone and you're fine. And you know, for those of you who want to make a comment about Shibata being one of the best knife sharpeners in the world and not doing a stropping technique, um, yes, there are a progression of stones that are very fine that you can take an edge and you can not use leather and do the technique and make the knife extremely sharp. Um, I would also say that like a, maybe a stropping technique was actually done by him, just not on leather. So the harder polishing stones really do a great job of folding over those, I said those high places of metal in between the ditches of the knife. When you sharpen the knife and you make those scrapes into the side of the knife and those high places are left up, we need to fold them over. You can do it on a stone. Polishing stones themselves are not cheap. You can do the stropping technique on 5,000, um, 6,000, 8,000, 10, 15, they make a 20, they make a 30. Um, when you get up into the, the the 20, I know you're at $305, I think, for that stone. I haven't looked at the 30 to know what that one cost. Um, you can do the eight. I think I got my 8K for $100, and I love it. So you can do the technique on non-leather. So leather is going to have a certain amount of give, all this material has a certain amount of give, so it's firm. Um, but at the same time, it's going to fold those over. Um, I do want to mention real quick before I forget, you guys know I don't like to do a lot of post-edit, so I have human moments. I do apologize for any mistakes sometimes that I make. I jumped off of here and forgot to mention that um, Hans sells these two on his website. I'll put a link for $80. Um, in case I'm wrong, it might be 80 euro. I think it was $80, but if it's 80 euro, it will be the correct amount will be in the description. And if I get it right, I'll even put the right numbers um, below this video right here and correct myself. I don't want to misquote. Um, so if you had nothing, uh, if you'd watched the video I talked about where Bob Kramer taught me how to sharpen a knife. Bob Kramer suggested cardboard. So if you needed to take your knife and rub the knife on cardboard to try to get that tension, um, you're able to kind of help make those sides go down even with just cardboard. The next thing I would recommend is a leather belt. A lot of us have leather belts that we're not using. You can get one. They're actually very inexpensive and you can stretch the leather belt. I generally would take it and I would pinch it right against the, uh, the bar right here and I would put tension on it. So the leather belt is a, is a great alternative. And then uh, make sure you don't need that belt because it's very easy to cut the leather. And then after that, you can start saving your pennies and get into something that's uh, purposeful. So, Again, today was just more of an introduction to the different types of material. Let me tell you what I personally do. I have these at my disposal. 
So, you know, why would I not do the absolute best things? My kangaroo that I'm using, and I'm using both of these right now, having fun. My kangaroo is used for removing the wire edge. That is its purpose. So post sharpening, I'm making sure that the wire edge is completely removed using this material. I'm doing the rough side, so many passes, and then the smooth side. We will do a video on stropping technique on a different video. I finish on the smooth leather. Now, with that being said, you might be under the impression that I do not use diamond emulsions. You would be wrong. Okay, my, I have my knife collection and then I have other people's knives and their collections vary from a German knife, which is slightly softer metal. Um, so whether they're Swiss or French, a Sabatier style, um, whether we use a Japanese, you know, I have a Chinese knife that I showed you um, and I was able to use the kangaroo on the Chinese knife and get an incredible score. Um, we have done some diamond emulsion comparisons. Next week, we're going to be comparing four different diamond emulsions. I'm excited about that. And I will definitely load that up. Diamond emulsions make a difference, and there are definite reasons to use them, especially not only polishing, but even in the sharpening. And diamond emulsions, you know, they help to take the scratches out to reflect light. They create a different knife feel. Knives have purposes. And sometimes when you're sharpening a knife, you forget the purpose of that knife. Some knives are supposed to have a toothy edge. So some knives might just get the kangaroo tail on the rough side, a little couple passes on the smoother side, even though it's textured, and it's done because that knife needs that type of texture. There are other knives that need a knife feel that just is just more razor-esque, more just has more slip as it slides through the types of food that it's cutting. So doing um, a polish with 0.5 micron, in this case, 0.25 micron. Over here, we have 0.5 micron loaded on this. That's going to help to make those ditches on the side of the blade smooth. And it's going to reflect more light. It's going to reduce drag. It's going to create a different knife feel. So whether you're a hanging strop person, a paddle strop person, or a block strop, there are a lot of things out there for you. I have loved what has been sent to me by Jinda Industries. Great guy. Um, I know that Scott Gunn with Gunny Juice has been using his Gunny Juice on the nano cloth. He has also been using it on basswood. I think he's actually preloaded his diamond emulsion on a basswood drop. So you've got options there. The kangaroo tails, I would not use diamond emulsion on them at all. They should be used as they come. The leather is your option. And um, so like you, again, we have one here with the diamond and one without. So this was your introduction to straps. The next video we're gonna do is the diamond emulsion. Then, and then the next one we're gonna do after that is stropping technique. So I look forward to this series. And uh, hopefully this has helped you maybe figure out the one you're gonna wanna get and to play. Uh, we have a wide variety of price ranges. So good luck in your shopping. Enjoy the video. Thanks for the feedback. I'm still learning. Thank you for your words. Some are kind, some are not. That doesn't mean that I'm still not paying attention and listening. We're trying to get better for you, so we do appreciate your patience. God bless. We're wishing you never a dull moment. As always, thank you for joining us.